Hello everyone and welcome to the first um, on this webinar series on Insight on Energy. Today we're going to try and answer some of the questions that we get frequently asked when we talk about steam and power systems. But first of all, why do we need a model and what can we do with a model? What components we need, need to be included? What are the benefits? And also, is it better to go for an online optimizer, run every hour, or an offline model? And we're going to show some case studies of sites that have used um, steam and power models as an offline tool and also as, as optimizers. Steam and power systems for refining and petrochemical sites, as we know, handle a significant amount of energy and can be extremely complex. In terms of complexity, um, well, there are many variables that can be manipulated. Let's say the source of steam generation, is it boiler or is it a GTHRSD? Turbine driven equipment versus motor, do we go for import power or export power? And if we do that, when do we do it during the day? Obviously it depends on the power tariff structure. Uh, the fuel type, in case um, if we have options of burning multiple types of fuel. And also there are, there are a few constraints. Obviously, the, first of all, the ever-changing demand of um, steam and also the supply uh, from different process units. There are equipment constraints, let's say the maximum and minimum boiler loads, turbine limits, and also the, their availability. And let's not forget emission limits, especially if we, if we have the chance to burn fuel oil and fuel gas. So all these factors will affect um, the way we try and balance our systems, um, steam and power demand, and also offer a significant scope for the energy savings. Yeah? Our experience tells us that up to 50% of the total gap of, in terms of best technology or compared to best technology uh, can be allocated to steam and power systems. In economic terms, um, we typically see that models of the utility system can help us to identify between 2 to 4 percent without capital investment. In some cases, we see a lot more than that. And we get, obviously, more than the once we add uh, capital investment. Okay? Let's say an additional, an additional 1 to 3 percent if we, if we track the performance of the steam system using this kind of tools. To simplify a sketch of a steam and power system, the typical components that we include, or that should be included, well, first of all, steam generation equipment, boilers, HRSGs, or heat boilers or process units, the headers, obviously the side headers, typically we have HP, MP, LP, so high pressure, medium pressure, low pressure, um, and also local headers for process units if they are very different from the side headers in terms of pressure. The steam consumers in terms of heat and steam, let's say reboilers, and light steams, let's say the, the, the steam we use on uh, columns, distillation columns. Also we have steam turbines, could be turbine generators, so multiple Turbines with multiple stages for power generation, like pressure turbines, condensing turbines, okay. so equipment that we use to drive pumps and compressors, and our gas turbines, flash drums, aerators, letdowns, and obviously the condenser recovery system. So what needs to be more? Well, before we think of what we need to include in the model, we need to know what we're going to use the model for. So in that way, we, we make sure we include sufficient details. Okay? In general, pretty much all components of the steam system have to be accounted for in one way or another. And we do this to try and capture the system's interaction. However, the moving approach of each equipment can be simple. The main factors to account for on equipment, let's say, okay, in boilers, what we need is efficiency. So we could include the stack or two and temperature. We need blow down. We need a steam load, and typically this is calculated by the model. Okay. 
And we need this to calculate the file duty, which is the main economic term. In terms of header, we need the header condition, pressure and temperature, which is control. Otherwise, the temperature can be calculated by the model and what we know as a dynamic header. In some cases, local headers can be simplified and accounted for in the side header. In terms of steam turbine or efficiency, it's a factor we should include, especially if the, if, the, if the equipment uses a significant amount of steam. And if it's a condensing turbine, what vacuum is achieved? In terms of steam users, um, obviously we need to know what the pressure level, so where they take steam from, which header, and also we need to classify it as a life of heating steam. Okay? And this is done because heating steam, we assume and we're, that a certain level of condensate will be returned. Okay? In terms of steam generators, um, at least we need to account the total amount generated from the process unit at each level. Okay? In some cases, we use um, battery limits, you know, that, that, might, that might be enough. D rates we need operating pressure, condensate return system, and flash drums. We need to know how much condensate is returned and which route the condensate goes. Is it flash? Is the heat from the condensate recovered outside the steam system? So these are the kind of questions we need to know. Also, in terms of the logic, we need to account for um, the marginal mechanism of the steam. Yeah? or the margin mechanism where the steam is generated. Is it from a pipe order? Is it from GT, HRSG, supplementary firing? Is it steam input? And the root of marginal steam. So if there is a spare capacity uh, for steam to go via turbines or turbine generators or power generation, or is it going via a letdown valve? For boiler houses, um, Typically, we have a small number of, of large equipment. Um, we have boilers, GTs, NHRSGs, turbine generators. What we need to bear in mind is that the equipment in the boiler house will help us establish um, the strategies to, first of all, minimize the letdowns if there is a spare capacity in the turbine generators or, or turbine driven equipment, o operate equipment at high efficiency points, let's say maximum equipment load. If the GT, if the, if the GT has an HRSG and we can supplement or refine, where is the maximum? So we can also determine the most efficient combination of equipment. We, take, we can take advantage of power and fuel contract. But to do this, obviously, we will need to include um, the economic terms and uh, fuel power users and generators within the system and also will help us to control and check um, emission levels. Regarding, regarding the process areas, process unit areas, um, well, we need enough information, first of all, to evaluate the effect of variations on the steam demand and generation at the different levels, and changes to minimize letdown through valves, and a selection of um, well, how we drive equipment, either with turbine or motors, when we have the possibility. The model, things you can do with the model. Now, the model we can use to, first of all, develop a heat and mass balance around the heads. This can help us to determine losses and also if we have any metering issues. If we have the model connected to our data historian, it can be used for um, monitoring, for tracking the performance, and also to determine lost opportunities. For instance, if the steam is let down by a letdown valve, instead of passing through a turbine, generate some power out of it. We can also use the model to calculate um, the real value, of the price of the steam, and the real impact of, of projects. But first of all, from the economic uh, point of view, but also from in terms of how it's affecting the overall um, side balance, steam balance, steam and power balance. Okay. We can also test multiple sen uh, operating scenarios and perform what-if analysis. We can review the benefits of quick wins and investment ideas, and we can perform optimization of the current operation. 
on top of these benefits, uh, well, we can use the model to evaluate the, the suitability of existing configurations for future scenarios. Let's say if we're going to increase this or decrease steam demands, um, changes to power tariffs, and we can also use it for training. And we talk about monitoring. So the information from the model can be exported to a dashboard to check the performance of the equipment and also the, of the overall site. We talk about optimization. It can be done offline or on real time. Okay, sometimes do it every hour. Also, you can do it one per shift. That might be easier to do it one per shift so you can plan your strategies ahead. Um, also, a model can be used for design. Well, to size new equipment based on multiple design cases. By doing this, we can achieve the overall optimum for the site. We can also review and optimize configuration decisions. Let's say how many boilers we're going to include. Are we going for a DT or a gas turbine or not? Um, what type of turbines we're going to have, um, etc. Also, there are some hidden benefits on the actual developing of the model. Although we might think that our staff is very experienced or that our utility system is very simple, and when, when I talk about utility, I mean the steam and power system. But building a model, either yourself or as a part of a team, will help, them, will help you and will help your staff to refresh or gain better understanding of several points. First of all, the connections and interactions between the boiler house and the process areas and the different equipment. Also, operating strategies that can be used to optimize your system, changes in operation at different power and fuel prices, what happens if we have sudden changes on the steam demands or generation from the boiler house, from the, from the process area, and also to understand the marginal mechanisms involved in the, in the steam system. Also during this stage, in the developing stage, the team usually comes with a quick win. Okay? And it's put some potential opportunities for, for investment. And all that can be considered later. Another important point is that now you have a model and you can easily test whatever the ideas um, come to mind. So we have talked so far of the benefits of having a model and the components that we need to include. What we haven't talked about is the best modeling approach. So the answer of this question, or to this question, depends on what you want to do with the model. The decision tree that we see on the slide can help us to determine which modeling approach we should follow. Okay? But you can see the first question is whether or not we want real-time optimization. If the answer is yes, then we need an online model. There's no doubt about it. Also, if we have several sites and we want to have a standard model structure, so the models look and feel the same on all the sites, and although this is slightly more restricting, the best option would be to go for a modeling package with a standard structure and with the logic already built in, rather than letting the user define their own structure and logic. Okay. As a part of KVC, we would suggest energy sim. If we don't need the real-time optimization, and what the only thing we need is a model that can be connected, um, or that can be connected with models of process units, and I'm talking about refinery-wide simulations or ethylene plant, then the best option is to develop a model that is part of a process simulation. In this case, we would suggest Petrosim Petrosim version 6, okay? so you can account for any interactions between process units or the model of your process units and the steam system in the same package. However, if what we want is a tool where we can perform simple equipment calculations, let's 
say one piece of equipment at a time, or more complex modeling in terms of the whole system, then the answer is uh, FrostGen. Um, in future webinars, uh, as part of this series, we're going to show the capabilities of um, each product, and please um, join us whether you have a license or not. On this slide, you can see a bit more detail of each offering. So, first team is Excel, I think. We can model, as I mentioned, from one piece of equipment to the whole site. You will build the model yourself in terms of logic and that type of equipment you want, you, you're going to use. It can be easily connected to your data history. Um, Energy Sim is based on trusting functions. It has inbuilt logic, and it has a very good feeling for corporate viewers. So if you have multiple sites, this would be the option. And Petrosim, you may know Petrosim, it's a process simulator, so it would be very good to connect your Steam system with whatever process unit is needed. It has also a rigorous GT model, okay? and it's easy also, very easy to connect to your data historian. In terms of economic benefits, um, typically we spend between 2 to 4 percent with offline models. And the way these 2 to 4 percent are is achieved is, first of all, because the strategy, how you run the model, is review, okay? import, search generation, export. Also, points are identified while you're building the model. This is usually the quick wins terms of operate, how you change or changes on your operating philosophy, and also during the building of the model, you can identify some character projects. An additional 1 to 3 percent can be achieved uh, by having an online model to track the performance, and this is mainly achieved in terms of sustaining savings that you have achieved with, uh, during the previous stage, so with quick wins, and because you will have a more proactive approach from the site's personnel. On top of that, an extra 1 to 2 percent might be achievable with an optimizer. However, our view is that so an, an online optimizer do have a place on the site strategy, but mainly for unexpected situations or if you have viral pricing or demand. Later on, we show one of the case studies, which is the case where um, the prices change pretty much every hour. So in this case, it makes sense to have an online optimizer. In general, I believe that most of these situations and this scenario that you're going to face can be covered in advance with an online model. So in our experience, around 80% of the total savings can be achieved by an online offline um, model. Here you can see, I'll talk about some case studies. So first one was an ethylene complex. Um, so we've been talking about steam and power models, and definitely we can, we can get from them. Uh, and perhaps we've been focusing mainly on the steam system itself, rather than how we can use it, how we can use the model to help us take decisions on an overall energy saving of the plant. So this case study is a perfect example on how a model was used to generate a roadmap and a decision tree. You can see it there. Um, and this was done for, for an ethylene complex in Asia. So for this site, KBC developed a series of energy saving projects for the whole site, including the process areas, as well as the steam model of, uh, of the system. What is interesting is that the site was thinking of building a new pipeline to import HPS, but the model showed them that there were other ways in terms of operational changes and projects with short payback time that would achieve more savings with lower investment. And also showed that the savings from this project would drop significantly once operational 
and site points have been implemented. The model was also used to show the effect of a uh, strategic decision, whether or not power can be exported, and if a boiler can be shut down, over the potential uh, saving of the remaining projects. Okay, this is what we see where we have the decisions, either we go yes or no. Okay, so depending on that, uh, different projects can be implemented. The next um, case study is, it was a uh, utility system optimizer for a refinery and petrochemical. So this, these were two neighboring plants with their own steam system. Okay. So it was a refinery with a complex steam system and many turbines that could be switched on and off. So motor and turbine driven equipment. And there was a petrochemical plant with a complex fuel balance, multi-stage generation system, and also a very complex um, dimming water network. Um, I should mention the site, share HP steam and boiling pit water. We talk about complex tariffs, so this um, power tariff, this was the case, or is one, one of the examples where there was a very complex power, power tariff structure. The power tariff change depending on the time of the day, the days of the week, if it was for the time. So many, many, many different options. And also, it depends on the time of the year, obviously, if it's winter or summer. Um, for this case, especially for the petrochemical, there were non-standard operating modes. So there was a significant fluctuation of their operation. So on top of aiming, uh, aiming to get the optimum operation for each site, we also needed to identify the optimum for the combined uh, complex. So in this case, it is obvious that it is unlikely that we can achieve, uh, we can find the optimal operation without the model system or the steam system. Especially because we wanted to, they wanted to keep each site, wanted to keep their data. And completely separate, so they didn't want the refiner didn't want the petrochemical to see what what was happening and vice versa. Um, so to tackle this problem, we have to develop two different steam systems and lead them, link them by a three optimizer. So you have one optimizer for the refiner, one optimizer for the petrochemical, and one optimizer for the whole complex. Okay, and this was done because uh, the combination of optimum for each site. Uh, might not result on the optimum for the overall complex. In terms of the result, well, first of all, now they had a tool, each site had a tool in place uh, to, give them uh, and, uh, to give them advice on how to operate um, to get the maximum benefit for their own site and also as an integrated complex. When we, and, and what I mean by that is refinery and petrochemical. Um, the reported savings were within the typical 2 to 4 percent reduction on the energy bill, which is what we expect when, when we build the model. Okay, or energy bill and that's for, for the steam and power system. Uh, but also during the development of the tool, uh, the site established work processes on how they were going to share the benefits. And they also gained a deeper insight on the individual operation and as well as how the changes in their operation affect the neighbor. I think this is the last case study I'm going to show today. This is a petrochemical site. It's a complex site with, um, it was 14 production plants, 7 utility plants. Um, typical production for the complex is uh, about 120 thousand uh, tons a year of in the ethylene plant. They also have a low density polyethylene plant and a propylene plant. Okay. The site has um, four headers. The boilers can burn uh, natural gas, fuel gas and fuel oil. It has multi-stage uh, 
turbines to walk them, 65 megawatts. We have condensing turbines, also two of them, 20 megawatts each. Um, it has a single gas turbine of 56 megawatts. And the interesting bit of this gas turbine is that the heat from the, from the gases was recovered against uh, boiling pit water rather than steam generation. So boiling pit water and the damming water that obviously later on they use for steam production. Um, the site has also three, had three choices from electrical power supply. Well, first of all, it can generate, it can generate it within, um, the utility plan itself. It has choices between the four STGs and the GT. So they generate enough, um, power to, pr to fulfill the steam, the, the, the site demand. Also, the self generation can be maximized. An excess power can be sold to the external grid. And it can self-generate, the self-generation can be minimized and the deficit bought uh, from external power grid. So the site uses currently the optimizer to determine the best way of operating depending on the power tariff. Okay. Another interesting point of this case is that, as I mentioned, there is a hidden benefit of having a model, which is when you build the model, you get a lot of um, you can get a lot of products out of it. And this was the case here. So while they were building the model, several ideas were suggested. And obviously once the model was ready, they were able to test them. Some of the ideas we mentioned here on the, on the case, but first of all, increasing um, the pressure of the very high pressure header and decreasing the pressure of the other headers. The benefit of this was about 2.5 million a year. Then there was optimization of the turbine, mainly focusing on trying to reduce the condensing. And this added to an impressive 15 million a year. And also changes to increase um, the damming water temperature. This is a more, um, a lower saving, about, but we're still high, about 16,000, uh, 60, 600,000 um, dollars a year. Many thanks for your time. And before uh, we take any questions, we would like to remind you that over the next few months, we will be running a series of webinars in modern steam and power systems using ProSteam, PetroSteam, and AUSTEAM. And please do join us well, okay? Even if you don't have the software. Thank you very much for your time. So, so